I am Chris Lee of Southeastern14.com, joined by Blake Lovell. Blake, here we are a few days before the start of the new year. We've got a dandy of an SEC slate starting Wednesday night, and then we'll have a little time off till they get things in gear again. But, boy, it's been a fun month and a half following the league, and, and now here, here we are right on the verge of league action and just a lot of fun games in front of us. Yeah, two big games, I think, to start off with. Uh, I mean, you know, you could argue perhaps some people think they're the four best teams that, you know, will play each other to start things off. Um, but, you know, in my opinion, you've got the two best teams probably squaring off on Wednesday, LSU and Auburn right now. It's who I have ranked in the top two spots. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, should be a, a fun start. And, you know, for some teams, it's a pretty um, interesting gauntlet of games to start SEC play for others. As we talked about, for a team like Arkansas, back half, I think much more um, challenging than the, the first half. So I think, as we always say, scheduling is important when it comes to these SEC mm -hmm. games and how your, your conference schedule is structured, I think, sometimes is not valued enough in terms of, um, you know, where a team is at going into conference play and uh, maybe needing, as we've talked about with Arkansas, a team that can really rack up some wins and some momentum and, and confidence and all that. Whereas a team like LSU, who's still unbeaten, I mean, quite frankly, their first seven SEC games are probably all going to come against NCAA tournament teams. So uh, that's that's always important. So we'll see how it plays out. Well, I asked you which of the two games that I had circled is the best one on the calendar between LSU Auburn and Tennessee Alabama. To me, I was flip a coin between those two. You answered without a lot of hesitation Auburn and LSU now you gave your reasoning for that you think they're the top two teams in the league right now but anything else that makes that a really compelling matchup over and above the rest yeah I mean I think it's just how the two teams have played uh, I mean you look at LSU's undefeated Auburn's a double overtime loss away from being undefeated they just got their arguably second best player best player however you want to put it back and Alan Flanagan so I think the matchup's just a lot more interesting. Um, you know, for Alabama, they've struggled, and, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I think these are just – these are the top two teams right now. And, you know, I don't know – I mean, certainly your opinion will change on one of these two teams based on who wins and who loses and probably how the game plays out. But, you know, if it's a if it's a close game, which you would expect it to be, um, I don't know how much your opinion changes on either one of these teams if they are as good as you think they are at this point. So – as we talk about LSU's defense, best in the country right now, when we say that, I mean, Auburn's defense is not far behind in terms of how they played on that side, too. And um, so I think it's just a, it's a very interesting matchup between two teams that, quite frankly, right now, I think are, are playing like teams that could make it to a Final Four, given the right draw and matchups in the tournament. Um, and that's why I think it's the, it's the most interesting one, just because you've got two teams with a whatever combined record of whatever it is 23 and one and um again that one loss is by double overtime to 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 uconn and i just think these are the best two teams and and i think we should be in for a really good game uh, to start off sec play the interesting aspect of that matchup to me blake is what auburn's got inside with kessler and jabari smith and those guys are just probably the most dominant pair of big men in the league LSU doesn't get it done with height. You got Tari Eason, 6'8, Darius Day, 6'7. And I know this is a different era of college basketball, right? But you don't often see teams that have the guys inside that Auburn's got. Uh, I don't know if LSU's faced anything like that. In fact, I'm certain it is not this year. But LSU can also really get out and run the floor, too. And I think still the number one defensive team in the country, according to Ken Palm, are right there closely. What do you see as the deciding things in this matchup? And by the way, Ken Palm's got this as a three-point game in Auburn's favor as we sit here doing this on Tuesday morning. Yeah, and and I assume that's just a you know that's a road game. Like as we've always talked about, in my opinion, I think still one of the toughest places to play. You know, at, at full, you know, having a full yeah. arena at, at Auburn Arena, I think is just we've seen it over the years the kind of impact that can have. Um, and I think that'll play into this game here and. I mean, I really, when you look at it, we talked about LSU's defense. They're able to force turnovers. Auburn doesn't turn over that much. I don't think really just from watching them. I don't have the stat in front of me. But I think that they've done a pretty good job offensively of kind of taking care of the ball. And, and that's what I think it would come down to is you just look at every statistical category defensively for LSU, and they are 
I mean, they are elite in, in every category pretty much at this point. And I think that is something where you know Auburn's going to get a lot of points from the three. LSU's been one of the best in the country at, you know, allowing not allowing points from the perimeter. So that's going to be the difference. I think, you know, if you're LSU, you have to kind of stick to what got you here to this point. And if they can do that, it's going to be a challenge, I think, for Auburn. But like I said, I, don't, I think you don't – we always say in college basketball, I don't think you underrate – the value of that that home court SEC yeah. opener, a team like Auburn that has gotten everybody, you know, they've got Flanagan back. They're they're really rolling right now. Um, we've seen Auburn beat some really good teams by double digits at Auburn Arena um, in games that you thought should be a lot closer than that. But when they get going, they're just hard to stop. And and I don't think that's how this is going to play out. But I, I never discount that when you're talking about Auburn playing at home. Uh, but I think LSU's defense has been good enough to where it, it's going to be a grind probably for, for both teams, really, when you look at it. Okay, Alan Flanagan is back, back. But is he is he back yet? Because Alan Flanagan, when healthy, is one of the most dominant players in this league. He only played 12 minutes the other night against Murray State. You can argue it's a 13-point game. Maybe they didn't need him more. How close do you think he is to being full full-on Allen Flanning like we saw him at the end of last year, where he just really, I thought, carried Auburn at times uh, when they had some of their stars out. Yeah, hard to know, but I, I don't think you bring him back in that game against Murray State if you're not ready for him to kind of turn it up a notch heading in, knowing that you have a week off before the game against LSU. So, I mean, otherwise, you could have just waited and brought him back at LSU, I think. So, I I look at it that way. I think that was kind of a game to sort of maybe try to get, you know, just to ease him back into things a little bit. But I feel like in a game like this, the, you know, it is a big game. Is he going to be where he's going to be, you know, 1st of February? Probably not yet. But uh, I think you'll you'll start to see it gradually increase. And I don't expect him to play 35 minutes in this game or anything. But, um, again, you know, maybe Auburn doesn't need that. They've been good enough, you know, without him. And that's not a knock on him. That's just how good they've been. So, uh, I think that'll be interesting, certainly, to see how it plays out. But I don't, you know, we're, we're talking about someone who did come back from a pretty significant injury. And so um, I don't think he's going to be playing 35 minutes in this game. But uh, I think that, you know, he'll play and he'll probably provide some sort of value uh, no matter how many minutes he's on the floor. Okay, lines aren't out yet, but I'm looking at Ken Palm, which is usually pretty close to those. Auburn, a three-point home favorite. Uh, over under according to Ken Palm 139 what do you like uh, on those I think Auburn probably wins this game um, I, everything I just talked about I don't really there's no reason to repeat it I'm just about the the home court aspect I think that they can overwhelm LSU in certain areas but it's just going to be harder with this defense and um, thus far you know LSU's defense has traveled and uh, that is something that you're not going to undervalue but maybe we're just undervaluing LSU again I mean they're the only undefeated team left in the SEC, and so um, maybe that's just once again we're just we're not get yet there, and I maybe I'm I'm there on them, but I just think that this is a tough road game to start SEC play, and so I'll take Auburn um, over under. That's a tough one. I just think that it's all about you know LSU, and, and thus far, I mean, I think it, their defense has shown up pretty much in every game, so um, that's that's probably about right. I think I'd probably still take the over. A lot of fouls we know in SEC play sometimes, so. Uh, that can kind of push that point total up a little bit. Okay, let's talk about Tennessee going to Alabama. Alabama, two-point favorite on that one. Ken Palm's got the over-under at 148. You know, Tennessee, it's funny, last year I feel like we've reversed roles on these teams. Alabama was a team that was just so even, and Tennessee was a team we didn't know what we were going to get. Right now it feels like those teams have flipped roles for this year. Maybe that's unfair to say – because, look, Tennessee had some issues early, but I feel like since that Texas Tech game, granted a couple of them were layups for the Vols, but they played better. They knocked off unbeaten Arizona last time out. What's your gut feeling on these these two teams headed into this one, Blake? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot harder to figure out just because you don't really know. I think with Alabama, how they've lost some of these games, it's 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 more difficult to predict. Uh, and again, when you're going up against a – you know, a really good defensive team, an elite defensive team in Tennessee, you know, that can cause some issues too um, in terms of whether it's turnovers or just Alabama not being able to sort of find its groove offensively. I think that's a little concerning. 
uh, if you're you're kind of looking at the direct trajectory of Alabama in recent weeks uh, and some of these games they've lost. But on the flip side of that, I still think there's a lot to be determined with Tennessee's offense. Um, you can look at the stats and see a lot of good things, but I, I still think there are some things that they they'll have to figure out moving forward. Uh, and, and Kennedy Chandler, I mean, he's got a he's got a tough matchup here, right? Like he's mm-hmm. very good, outstanding player, but. He's going against the best guard group in the, you know, arguably in the, the league or maybe, you know, one of the best in the country, even though I know they've struggled. But still, I mean, you're not, you know, you'll take Quinterly, Shackelford, and Davidson against a lot of trios nationally. Um, you know, but like we say that, I mean, Viscovi, he's played really well too. And so this is a, a very interesting guard matchup, I think, with this group here and um, what they can do, uh, I think, is going to be a, this. This is a, this is probably a, one of the hardest ones to call, I think, just because you don't know exactly what you're getting from Alabama. Um, and I think with Tennessee, I, I'm, I'm there on them. I think they are, you know, certainly in that discussion for the best team in the league right now. There are still some things I'd probably like to see offensively. Um, you know, can they make some shots consistently from the outside and such? And I, I don't know. This is this is one of those, you know, classic conference openers that could really go either way. And, and I think it's the same about Auburn LSU. But this is a this is a hard game to predict with these two. Yeah, to me, one of the keys might be John Fulkerson because he was so good last time out against Arizona, and, and you know he's he's flashed this at times, right? Last year he was the preseason player of the league coming in, didn't come anywhere near to living up to that. But Auburn's got an inexperienced big, although very talented, in Charles Bediaco. Tennessee, according to Ken Palm, uses its bench a lot more than Alabama does. To me, those are two interesting things to watch. Yeah, I, I think that's something, too. You know, we always talk about the depth, and that's going to be important, um, I think, especially in these conference games and, and how it all plays out. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's another one. And this is just – this is, like, I just looking at the numbers and trying to figure out what you're going to get out of this game, you know, it's another one where I think Alabama being at home in Tuscaloosa, I think it's going to make a, a big difference in a game like this. But – you, know, you say that and, and you've seen Tennessee, you know, win some games away from home. And, um, you know, I know they struggled in those two Villanova, Texas Tech, but, you know, they did get that win at Colorado and coming off that big win against Arizona. So uh, this is I mean, it's a close game. You, would, you wouldn't expect anything different from these two. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's a it's a very interesting matchup, especially, I think, with those those two backcourts. particularly. Well, and just to note, Alabama's three losses have all come away from home. Um, so there's that, too. Gut feeling, Alabama. I mean, look, it, it minus two, hard, hard to hard to win that and cover, or, or not cover. What's your gut on that one? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the same thing. I'm gonna usually refer to the home team in these kind of games. Yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I think you just don't. You have the body of work in non-conference, but until you actually see it, you know, in conference play, I think it's just hard to. When you have games like this, you're, you're probably going to lean towards the home teams, and that's probably what I'd do here because we know Alabama's trying to sort of get right, I guess, um, after that loss to Davidson, and they just haven't played well in the past couple of weeks. So, uh, But I think this is one of those spots where they can do that. So, Well, the other thing, too, and this also holds at Auburn, Alabama and Auburn are, are football schools, but when I've watched their home games, those crowds have shown hey, I up. I think you're and- on mute. Yeah, hey, one other thing, when I watch those games, Alabama and Auburn are, are football schools, right? But those fan bases have shown up and been pretty energized in the home games so far. Yeah, they have, and uh, I think that's going to really be one, as we know. I mean, it's it's kind of like you talked about. I mean, Alabama's you know, reigning SEC champs, and um, there's there's still a lot of momentum certainly there. And talk about fan bases, uh, they, they've got one of the best ones too, so it should be a, a fun atmosphere. Mississippi State, a four-point favorite, according to Ken Palm, hosting Arkansas. You know, the, these two more teams that are tough to figure, uh, and State really was Jekyll and Hyde a year ago. What's your take on this one? I mean, you know, we keep saying this, like this feels like two even teams. And, um, you know, it's an opportunity for Mississippi State, I think, to kind of prove themselves a little bit. I think they've – I don't want to say we know they're good, but – I think they just haven't had a non-conference slate that's just really wowed you to this point. And it's the same with Arkansas, right? So I, I think it's this will give them the opportunity to kind of, you know, showcase what they can do and clash of styles here in terms of how these two play. 
I think offensively, um, you know, that's where Mississippi State, we've always known. They just kind of use their their size, and they can be a bit more methodical at times with, with how they play and all that. But um, I think it's, you know, it's another one where Arkansas, we've, we've talked about it. I mean, they're just – they're missing something. They don't have the same sort of shooting element. I don't think they're as good defensively certainly as that team last year. Um, and I think that's something that, that we'll see kind of play out in games like this. Can they go on the road and win a game like this against the team that is going to have a chance to make the NCAA tournament? If they can, as we've said, I mean, they've got a really favorable first seven, eight games in SEC play. So for Arkansas to win a game on the road like this would be significant just based on their schedule. Two more conference games. Uh, you've got Florida is a four-point favorite heading into Ole Miss, which really was awful last time out and a bad loss to Sanford. Then you got Kentucky, a 19-point favorite at home against a Missouri team that's just bad. Any thoughts on either of those? Yeah, I mean, Kentucky should should handle Missouri. I mean, it's just – it is what it is at this point for Missouri. They're just not good. Um, right now they can't do much of anything offensively. They've just got to, you know, they can't score. They've got all these things they've got to get figured out. Um, you know, I mean, they're just 24.3% from three point line. That's just absolutely horrendous. Um, and, and you know, I think on the other game, you know, it's another one where we've talked about Florida and, and I just think it's a team that we've said how important this game is for Florida I mean, after that, you know, they get Alabama, Auburn, LSU. Uh, so I think this is a – you're not going to call it a must win. But, like, this is a big game for, for Florida, I think. For, if you're going to find any of that trust sort of in the Gators, um, this is the kind of game they should win because Ole Miss is – you know, they're coming off a loss to Sanford at home. Um, and clearly this is just this, this Ole Miss team, I think, is just going to be too inconsistent offensively, at least they have been thus far, to probably be able to trust them right now. Um, and, and I think for Florida, you gotta win this game. Uh, if you're going to, if you're going to be a factor, you know, in the top part of the sec and be a team that can, you know, make a second weekend run in the NCAA tournament, these are the kind of games you got to win. It's, it's still December. That's which I think you we could say all that to say that, yeah, it's Florida can lose this game and still be fine come March. But I just think they're they're a better team, and I think that they need to probably find a way to, to show that here because yeah. Oxford's not an easy place to play either. Um, like we know, we just had Sanford won there, but I think this is just conference openers are always tricky, and uh, I think for Florida, it's just I don't know. This is one that you think they should win. Their defense should be able to just you know make Ole Miss struggle on offense, but at the same time, um, yeah, this is still a Florida team. You're having trouble trouble trusting them right now, so. Any parting thoughts on the SEC schedule? We got no. some non-conference games too. I don't think any of those are really no. worth discussion. No, though. there's not really. Yeah, it's going to be all about the conference games, and then uh, yeah, next Tuesday we'll officially start the usual Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday swing of having SEC games. I guess every week until the end of the season. So uh, yeah, that should be fun. We've got a special partnership. Uh, I'll give you just a second to tell folks about that as we close the show today. Yeah, um, Action 24-7, we've got our, our special code you can use, uh, South14. That gets you, uh, you know, you sign up, uh, they'll match your deposit up to, to $800. And, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, that time of year where you know, everyone likes to bet the NCAA tournament and everything. But, you know, you can, especially early in conference play, if you've watched these teams, you see some of these lines that we've just said, a lot of these games are toss-ups with, with some of these better teams. It's just, it is what it is. But, um, there are some things you can take advantage of. I mean, what, what's the what's Kentucky, Missouri is like, 19. I mean, I don't know what it, I mean, I think Kentucky's, you know, that's what we talk about. Like you want to try to take advantage of some of these opportunities. I just don't, I don't see Missouri putting up a lot of points there. And I don't see Missouri having success stopping Kentucky and, uh, she freeway on the, you know, offensive Ooh. boards and stuff. So 19 sounds low to me, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But, yeah, that's uh, South 14. You can use that actually 24-7. Uh, yeah, great great people over there, and uh, we'll have the, the link and everything you can use to, to go to that referral code and everything. Uh, we'll put that in the, the description of this this video. So. Over under 139 on that one, according to Ken Palm. Anything probably, that, that interests probably, you? I mean, probably under because I just yeah. don't. Missouri, I don't know how they're going to score. That's yeah. the problem. I mean, I just – that's just that's a challenge, I think. And and look, that's 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 a combo. That's 
Kentucky is good. Missouri has not been very good. And you put those two together, and I think it's just common sense that you're going to lean towards Kentucky but big uh, and rough in a game like that. Yeah, last time we saw Missouri away from home, it was against Illinois, which is, I guess, comparable, and, and that was not pretty at all. Yeah, I mean, they lost to Kansas by, what, 37 on the road, um, lost to Illinois by 25 away from home, lost to 21 on the road at Liberty, <laughs> lost to 23 yeah. on the on neutral, source, neutral side against Florida State. I mean, do the math. I, I think Kentucky's probably the second-best team of that group, maybe behind Kansas, so – I just don't, I just don't see it uh, being a very favorable matchup there for Missouri. Okay, uh, we've got lots of other videos coming. We're putting them up on bowl games involving SEC teams as those happen. So be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. Thanks for watching our video. We'll have a bunch more of these to come during SEC basketball season.